Hi everybody, welcome to Amapura Awakenings Insights. My name is Nikki and I'm a spiritualist medium and I had a spiritual awakening in 1998 and from that experience I awakened to many things about myself, um, my relationship with God, my connection to spirit and to creation itself. And so I would love to be able to have the time during my life to sit down and focus on all of the things that I recognize about the self and about spirit and our relationship with God that I want to write a book or write many books or write series of books but unfortunately I don't have the time to do that I don't even think that there are enough years left in my life to be able to do that so I'm trying to share the knowledge that I have and the experiences that I have had with everyone so that they could kind of find the peace that I have found in my life and so that they can recognize that when we hear about living heaven on earth that it's actually a thing that we can actually have heaven on earth and that we can actually experience heaven on earth and that heaven is actually on earth and if we could just tap into that part of ourself we would see heaven everywhere we look. So I actually made a cheat sheet for myself today because the way I normally do these videos is my spirit kind of prompts me with a topic and then I sit down in front of the camera and I just let my stream of consciousness move me forward in whatever topic that I'm talking about. But today's topic I actually took some notes on because I don't want to get lost off on a tangent and I do want to be able to share the information and make sure that I'm providing all the information so when I turn off the video and I walk away I don't say oh I wish I would have shared this or oh I wish I would have shared that so I thought I would take notes this time before we started and that I would refer to my cheat sheet which is right here so if I seem to be glancing away from you um, it is just to make sure that I'm staying on point so today's topic is about nature and it's about how we connect with nature and our expression as a human being and as a spiritual being and how we interact with nature on both of those levels which brings us to a point of a trinity of the self which means that through nature we can heal and through nature we can obtain insight and through nature we can recognize who we are and through nature we can heal and so years ago uh, not too many years ago like maybe four or five years ago I read a book by Paolo Coelho called The Alchemist and oh my god if you've never read the book I highly encourage you to read the book and read it again and read it again I think I've read it like three times but it's a great book and the reason I refer to that book is because the pinnacle thing that I really took from reading that book aside from all of the other beautiful jewels that um, that you get to take with you after you read the book is that if you don't master yourself if you can't master yourself if you can't understand who you are and how you are and and take charge of that so that as so that your conditioning doesn't manipulate you throughout the course of your life so that you can have a taste of heaven on earth that the only way to obtain that balance or that connection to God and to everything is if you can master the self so that's my biggest lesson that I took I think from that book um, on that was written by Paolo Coelho so from that I wanted to kind of touch base on how do we begin to master the self and how is nature even connected to that. So I've been married for quite a while and uh, my husband is Hispanic and his parents are from Mexico. So early on in our marriage, um, my daughter, my older daughter Brittany and I went to Mexico to visit um, our family there. And when we went there, my father-in-law was just like the most awesome guy like I love him so much and he always just welcomed us and accepted me and my daughter and treated us as if we were his own children so in the early part of our stay when we had first gotten there it was um, raining outside and so my father-in-law says to me come on let's go to the Parian which is this place it's like a little outdoor market and they have like arts and crafts and things like that and my daughter at the time was like six, five or six years old. And so I said, well, you know, it's raining outside and 
I don't want her to get sick and I probably don't feel like walking in the rain myself. And he says, oh no, mija, don't even worry about that. He said, I can tell the rain to stop wherever we're walking and the rain will stop and it won't rain on us. But like, you guys, it was pouring outside and I was like, no, really, that's okay. We could go to the market tomorrow. We don't have to go today. And I know he was just like trying to take us around Mexico and show us all the beautiful places, but I really wasn't about walking in the rain. And he kept telling me over and over and over that he knew how to talk to the rain and that all he had to do was ask God uh, and the rain to stop and that we would have a fine day and that the sun would shine. Now, I know that the area that my husband is from, the weather is kind of like it can rain for a little while and then the sun comes out and then it can rain for a little while and the sun can come out. But this particular day, it really was raining quite a bit. In any case, um, so trying to be a good sport, I got my daughter ready and we went out to the Parian. Well, I noticed that when we started to walk outside, it's, it started to drizzle and not rain. So I wasn't really getting wet, just a few specks of water. And then I noticed the further we walked, he just kept telling the rain to stop raining. And my daughter was like laughing at him. And I was telling her that what he was trying to do was tell the rain to stop and wouldn't you know the rain stopped and it confused me because as people were walking toward us they were wet but as we were walking toward them we were not and during the course of the whole vacation that's exactly how the vacation went like if it was raining all he had to do was say like stop raining and it would stop and that blew my mind and for months and months and months i kept it blew my mind i kept asking my husband like how does your dad do that like he just talks to god and tells god to tell the rain to stop and the, and the rain listens and um when i read that book by paolo coelho there is a story in there where the young man wants to become an alchemist and so he meets with the alchemist and the alchemist tells him to go sit up on a mountain and once he can control like the wind and and you know all of the elements of the earth that then he could really consider himself an alchemist and that's only if I'm remembering that part of the book correctly but when I read the book years later it made me remember that story about my father-in-law and that how he was able to literally tell the sun to come out or tell the rain to stop and that he could do that. And so I was asking, you know, in my prayer often, how did that occur? And how did he, how was he able to do that? And so when I actually put the intention of wanting to know how my father-in-law was able to do that, you'd be surprised, but God answered and seriously he answers so all you have to do is send out that little prayer and ask and I was really curious about this and I said I want to know how that works and I want it to become part of my experience because even though I read it in a book and even though my father-in-law told me some things about it I didn't really understand how it worked and I wanted it to be an experience see things should be an experience like I can tell you and share all my stories with you but if you don't make it an experience of your life, then what I say just turns to information in your brain that sooner or later is going to fall out of it if you don't utilize it and kind of bring it in. In any case, I was saying a prayer and I did repeatedly ask how this was possible. And what I noticed about just a couple days after I put that initial intention about how I wanted to understand this, I started to recognize that people started to talk to me in nature-based terminology. And I'm sure they've always spoken to me that way. That's how we speak to each other. But a few days after I put out this prayer about how did this, how did, what did this mean in the book, The Alchemist, and how did my father-in-law tap into some part of himself that actually allowed him to do that? And so when I did that, um, people, like I said, started to talk to me in nature-based terminology so they were saying oh my gosh she came in you know like a hurricane or that her her behavior was like a tornado or you know she was like a breath of fresh air and I started to notice oh wow yeah that's true and I started to think about that and really really started to take that into my experience like 
we describe people based on nature and when we describe somebody's energy or force of energy oftentimes we're referring to it as if it's a nature-based description you know like Oh my gosh, the words that she said to me, they just hit my heart like a wave of love. And so you're referring to a wave of love as it rushes through your body, which is a connection about water. And so recognizing that when we describe people, that oftentimes we describe them using terminology that is connected to the energy of nature, the energy of creation. So that kind of rec helped me to recognize how nature speaks through me, how nature is actually part of me. And so recognizing that in my meditation and in my prayer and just in my recognition of how spirit talks to me and I am recognizing that moment that in our description of people we we refer to them oftentimes as if they have the energy of nature and and when I recognized that I started to think okay well I can see how that functions outside of me but how does that function inside of me like I, I can see that I can describe things and describe people and describe who we are using nature-based terminology and having it make sense to the whole world but how is it possible and how does that even move inside of me and so I started to think about that portion of this whole experience and something that I recognized was well I'll, I'll tell you the story of how I actually came to recognize it there was like a huge thunderstorm and I was working in an office at the time and there was this huge thunderstorm like one of the biggest ones we had had in a really long time and it really kind of toppled our neighborhood like trees were bent and broken and you know on the way to on the way to work I could see all the trees coming down keeping in mind I have a, like a 45 I had a 45 minute drive to work and so my um, keeping in mind also that I'm a medium and so I connect with spirit and people from heaven talk to me so I get in the car and I'm actually recognizing all of these the destruction of of nature because of the thunderstorm that we had had and how it kind of really wreaked havoc in our neighborhood and I noticed that also on the drive to work so as I'm driving to work it, it is not it is not nor it is not not normal for somebody in heaven to kind of like jump in my car and start having a conversation with me about things because possibly they're going to show up for a reading that I'm going to have over the weekend or a group event or something so I don't it doesn't it doesn't bother me and and oftentimes also what will happen is maybe they're not there I don't I don't have a physical sensation of them but I can feel their energy I can feel their presence and they're communicating with me so this particular day on my day to work excuse me excuse me this wide this really wise old man his energy got into my car and when he got into my car he was like look at all of the trees look at look at what happened to look at what happened to them they're such fine soldiers taking care of the world standing in defense of the elements standing in defense of anything negative look at how they are and when this old man energy in my car said this to me I was like it brought me to look at the trees in a very different way and I was like yeah they're like they felt like fallen soldiers to me and so this gentleman this wise gentleman old gentleman stayed in the car with me on my way to work so now I'm about 10-15 minutes away from work and I had to go down this road there's a two lane highway and one of the trees one of the very biggest oldest trees i think um was like fallen over into the middle of the road so they they had workers there and they were moving the tree but as i was coming closer to the tree this old man said and there i am and when he said that his energy went to the tree fallen in the middle of the road and I said, well, why are you, why, are, why did you leave the car basically and go by the tree? And then this understanding rushed through me and he told me he was the tree. And I was like, oh my God, 
I'm talking to a tree, like a tree is talking to me. How can a tree be talking to me? Like this doesn't make sense for a tree to be talking to me. But I recognized that his energy was very old and very wise and his energy matched that tree. And I recognized that that was the vibration of the tree, that that was the life source of the tree, that that life source is the same source of life that is in me. And then I recognized, oh my God, I can talk to nature, like, or nature can talk to me, or like I can talk to the tree, and like the tree can talk to me, and the tree has a vibration, and the tree has a source of life, and I am the tree, and the tree is me. And now I'm trying to go to my job, and I'm a software engineer, and none of this makes sense. So then I'm thinking like, you know, software engineer programming stuff, like if this is possible, how is this possible, then why would this be possible? And I was freaking out, and I called my daughter, I said, you know, I talked to a tree. And she's like, okay, mom, <laughs> I think you're a little crazy, mom, but that's okay. In any case, I got off the phone with her, and, and I, I, I started to pull into the parking lot at my job still having my mind being blown and then I got out of the car and I felt something and I felt like this breeze rush through me and I I I was I was humanly aware that the leaves on the trees were creating a breeze because the wind was coming through the trees but as that was happening I heard this oh Whisper, whisper, there she is. She's coming. We should say hello to her. Let's say hello to her. And it sounded like really welcoming friends. Like if you are walking into a party and everybody's like, oh, she's here, she's here. Oh, we should go say hi to her. And that's what the breeze said. And the breeze manifested its voice through the trees which is the force of life, which I am, so I could understand what the breeze was saying to me as it breezed past me and through me, but was also within me, and I could understand it. And that experience for me solidified everything about who we are in human and who we are in spirit and what is that life force that moves through us and how does it connect to us and how are we one with it and how are we it and I recognize that we feed our bodies that our bodies belong to mother nature they belong here everything that is making up our body is what mother nature has given to us the food we eat the water we drink Every single thing within us is created through the consumption of nature. Breathing the air, eating the food, um, um, sharing with, with plants and animals. Like, think about it. It's insane. And it blew my mind. And I didn't think it was possible. And if you would have told me 10 years ago I was going to talk to a tree or talk to a flower, I would have been like, so you think I'm Pocahontas? Because I don't think that that's a thing. But I recognized it was a thing. And it is a thing. And that's what I want to share today. And I want to check my cheat sheet because I want to make sure I cover everything because something is popping into my head. And what's popping into my head is our chakra system. Each of our chakras is connected to an element. So like our root chakra is connected to matter. Our sacral chakra is connected to water. Our solar plexus chakra is connected to fire and our heart is air and our throat is vibration. I mean, think about that. Think about that. We are made of nature. We are made of this earth. We're also gonna return to this earth when we pass away, but that's actually what's happening there and it's beautiful so thanks for joining Almapura Awakenings Insights today's topic was about nature how we are one with it how we become it and um, how we communicate with it so I hope that you like the video leave me some comments and um, send me any questions that you like and feel free to visit my Facebook page and uh, like my page if you like the videos. Thanks for joining. Have a great day. Bye.